Hello, I'm Matt Bowman, and this is Matt Bowman is Bothered. How the flip are you? I don't swear now. It's a big change. I don't frappin' swear. No, that's not it at all. I just don't know how to start podcasts. I don't know how to start them. I, I kind of just do it. You know, you kind of just start. There's no real way to, unless you've got like a scripted one or like, or one, I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know how to start. So you just kind of start talking. And again, I'm still, I've been doing this for weeks now and I'm still getting used to it. And I, I hope that that comes off that I'm trying to get better at it, but I don't know. Yeah. It's uh, recording on a Sunday, the Lord's day. I don't know how to do the cross thing correctly. I don't think. I think you go down, up, down, left, right. I think. I'm not Catholic. If you're Catholic and listening to this, stop it. I don't want you. But also let me know. Let me know what's going on. Just tell me, please. No, uh, recording on a Sunday. Uh, there's. I had too much going on yesterday on Saturday. I had too much going on. Um, and by that, I mean, I didn't want to, you ever, yeah, you ever just don't do something. And so you make up a list of like 17 things and you're like, oh, of course I can't do it because of all of these things, but all of those things are bullshit. And you know that you know that they're bullshit, but you just don't want to do it. And you'll talk yourself into anything. You silly, you silly goose. Here's a silly goose. will talk yourself into anything. If anything, you're a very fucking persuasive goose. You know? You could you could could have been a could have been a salesman, you goose. You you goddamn charismatic goose. That got me swearing on the Lord's day. I was definitely swearing earlier watching uh I like soccer or football or footy. I like that a lot. And I was watching my boys, my boys just played uh Manchester United just beat Arsenal 2 to 1, which was great. Um, then Arsenal beat Liverpool 3-2. Those are the big games for today. There's a couple other, I don't know. Some of you don't care about this and that's fine, but just know that I am only ever going to talk about things that I truly care about. And if you guys are here for it, that's dope. If you're not here for it, that's fine. Um, but yeah, Manchester United look good today for the most part. Um... I also think that they just need to figure out the fucking handball rule. They got to figure that shit out pronto because um, Rashford scored what would have made the game 3-1 and put it to bed, uh, but uh, they said he handled it like it was an accidental thing. And I just think that it's... It, I don't know. I just think the whole thing is mostly horse shit. However, if you are going to say... I do understand the... In order to get rid of all... Controver not even but the thing is you don't get rid of controversy you just add in more controversy but you have like a definitive like okay if it touches your hand boom immediately done if that is the case it must be applied equally across all games that's how it has to be and all across all situations because i think the biggest problem is just the inconsistency like there was a game earlier today where there's a massive handball decision and uh they didn't do anything about it uh, and but then in this one which resulted in the scoring of a goal which would have effectively killed the game the game would have been basically over with 10 minutes to go and they go to var and they they give they disallowed the goal because it like bounced up and happened to like graze his underarm and it whatever dude it's very annoying is all it is and i just want consistency just want consistency, baby. My mouth's super dry today. Boom, bam. What's going on with me, dude? I don't know. I, I'm i trying to figure out how best to direct the energy of this podcast. Um, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to talk about things that I like, but also in an interesting way that gets more people to listen to it. Because... At the end of the day, I'm trying to grow this, which is, I understand, very vain and silly to say, but I am trying to get more people to listen to it. And yes, I have joy in my heart by talking about and following the things that I want, but I'm a silly little attention whore and need more people to like me. Um, so I'm trying to figure out how best to do that. Boom.
So if you've got any ideas, send them my way. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that'd be dope. Yeah, so I'm trying to figure out how to talk about things, what to talk about, what to do, where to go, who to bang. I'll bang somebody if I need to, to get up there. But yeah, just trying to figure it out. I don't know. So for now, we're going to kind of just talk about some shit that fucking happened to me this week. I was sitting next to a guy on the train um, that just started throwing up on himself. In that fun? Um... I was taking the train uptown last, ooh, I don't know, sometime last week, and it was not late. It was like 7.30. I was going to a show up in Harlem, and I'm sitting down. So the way that the train car was set up is that there's like three seats along the wall, and then there's like two seats that come out and kind of form like they're perpendicular. I remember geometry terms. They're perpendicular. Per, oh, God damn it. Perpendicular to each other and so i'm sitting on the inside of the two so i'm facing forward and there's two people in the seats closest to me on the three so i'm kind of tucked into the corner and then a gentleman gets on and sits down next to me on my right so now i am hemmed in by this new guy and the people directly in front of me and so this guy comes on and he starts doing uh, he starts doing like the sleep shift, you know, you know what I mean? Where like, you're like, somebody is asleep on a train or in a seat and they kind of just like start swaying and they kind of like lean over to one side and then they like kind of snap up. Um, so this guy was like fully asleep though. So I'm assuming he was drunk, which is sad because again, the sun had not gone down yet and he was not 19. Do you know what I mean? Like, this guy at least had a very bad day, or a very good one, but from the looks of it, it was a bad one. Um, so, he's sitting there, and he's doing this, the sway, and it's kind of annoying, because, like, they'll sway to your side, and you have to give, you had to give him the arm check, you know, and so I, I wasn't, I wasn't being mean, I just kind of, like, was like, hey, man, you're fucking, you're, I, you're, you're in my grill, um, and he kind of, like, woke up, and was like, Whoa. he had, like, his phone in his hand, and then he like, and then I'm watch. I go back to looking at my phone, and then I kind of see out of the corner of my eye that like he starts to like, he starts to drool, like a little bit of spit came out of his mouth, and I was like, okay, I guess we're sleep spitting. We're just, I guess that's a thing, just sleep spitting. But I mean, it kind of is a thing, you know, like if you're sleeping and you're in a deep sleep and you wake up and you just kind of drooled, that's something. So that it, at this point, I still wasn't too concerned that this gentleman was going to be that big of a problem. Um, so he kind of just starts spitting a little bit and I'm like, okay, that's fine. I can, I can handle that. He's on, he's not spitting on me. It's just kind of like a slow dribble out of his orifice into his lap. So that keeps that. So we're doing that. We're in that holding pattern for probably about two, three, three to five minutes, something like that. This is a long train ride. I'm going all the way. I'm going from Brooklyn to Harlem, like on the A it's, it's taken a while to get up there. And so he starts spitting and about five minutes later, I just, you know, like when somebody starts going, like they start getting like the, huh, 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 like it, they're, they're, they're pumping baby. Their stomach is pumping and not in the medical way, like the bad way where your throat's about to burn. So he starts doing the pump, you know, huh, huh, huh. and then like, it just comes out of him, dude. Thank God. It wasn't like a fucking fountain. But it came out of him. And again, I am fucking stuck in this corner right next to this guy. There's no immediate exit. His legs are right next to mine. And the lady in front of me's legs are kind of keeping me in. And so, like, I don't know what this guy's going to do. This guy's fucking hammered or on heroin at 6 o'clock in the evening or whenever the fuck it was. He's unhinged at this point. I gave him plenty of opportunities to, like, get his shit together. So I fucking take my forearm and just give him a wham. Like, I don't hit him, but I, like, I get him enough. And he kind of, like, looks up at me. And for a half a second, I felt bad for him because his eyes were so confused. He had no idea really what was going on. But then I just like literally looked and I was like, dude, you are fucking throwing up on yourself, dude. That's disgusting. And then like I hit him again and he kind of like leans away and I he moves his legs. Thank God enough for me to like get out and I just go to the other end of the car. 
And so at that point, I'm like standing at the other end of the car and I want I want to see how the situation plays out because now that I'm not in like the line of fire, it's interesting. You know, like if I had been uh, uh, if I had been an observer originally, I wouldn't have had a problem at all. It would have been actually interesting and fun to partake and witness this event. And so I just kind of like check back over and he doesn't do anything for a second. And then he just goes, oh, ha, and then just like goes like all over the front of himself. And then like that's when everyone's just like, oh, God, oh, oh, you know, when people see something real gross, they all, uh, uh. And he just kind of like leans over and like where I was sitting about 20 seconds beforehand, he is now just like basically throwing up into that seat and is just going everywhere. And then he goes like right back to sleep. I can't tell if I like, I can't tell if that guy is, no, that guy sucks. I was about to say, I can't tell if he's like really cool or really sad. No, nah, that, that's sad. Is really sad. And he wasn't like homeless. That was the thing. Is like I didn't get the like, because he had like a phone. He had like w work boots on. So maybe this is just a man who has a tough day job and had one too many whiskey sours at the, at the bar. But I doubt it. I doubt that. I bet his life really fucking sucks. And that's why he was hammered at 7 p.m. on a Thursday evening. Um, so yeah, that was fun. Don't throw up on yourself on the train. So that's that story. Um, what other what other shit happened to me this past week? I did, I found myself, you know those moments where you're kind of walking through life and you're like, I, this could be like a B-list Seinfeld episode. So I go to Chipotle Right. And it's random. It's not very full, which is difficult to come by um, in the city. People love Chipotle. Um, but I go in. It's kind of I went in an awkward time. I'll say that uh, it was like the middle of the day. It was like two in the afternoon. Um, and so I go in for a late lunch. It's just me and the Chipotle workers in there. So it's not like hectic or anything. It's not crazy. So I go in. I get my bowl for here, which is odd normally i get it to go but i got it for here and i was like hey can i have a cup of water now in the back of my head i don't know about you guys but when i go to chipotle and i order a water i'm lying i'm not going to be getting water water will not be drank by me i will be getting any of the fountain drinks and or any of your lemonades because i don't know if you've been to a chipotle recently but they have like five different lemonade options that's fine and i get a cup for water i get it i go over to the machine and the soda machine and i get my a little bit of ice and then i go to uh coke zero because i'm off diet coke i'm on coke zero i'm a coke zero baby and so i take it and i try to get coke zero and it comes out like all white all carbonation no syrup that's a no-go. That's not what I'm looking for. So then I go to the Coke. Nothing. Diet. Nothing. Fucking Sprite. Hard to tell. Had to taste it. Nothing. The whole thing is out of soda, but I, I, I can't go tell them. It's just me in there. They just saw me and know that I got Chipotle and just a water. I can't be like, hey, the soda mach machine's out. And they're like, how the fuck do you know that? Just guessing. Just an intuition. That's so Bowman. That's me. No, I can't do this. Now I'm fucking stuck. Now I'm just stuck here. And I had to get water. Like a fucking plebeian. Plebeian. Whatever the correct way to pronounce that is. You know? I, I, cause I just couldn't go up to them and be like, Hey, I need, can I, the soda doesn't work. And they're like, why does that matter to you at all? The fucking, do you care? Do you care that one of, do you care that my car doesn't work? That these are things that don't matter to you. You know, my, my Metro card is out of money. Does that has no impact on your life? That would, that would be their response because why would I need soda? I would need I need water because that's what I ordered. 
However, they have to know. They're like one of the last companies, Chipotle is, that when you when you ask for a water cup, they actually give you a cup that is representative of what a normal human would drink from. Some places you're like, hey, can I have a water cup? Can I have a water cup? And they give you like the lid to a two liter and are like, hey, this is what you, this is. This is you got this. Is this good enough for you? You you cheap piece of shit. How about that? You go to some places and they're like, hey, how about how about half a Dixie cup? We took a Dixie cup and cut it in half. You kind of got to lay it on its side. Is that fair? Is that good? You know, Everywhere's everywhere is just like the fucking dentist's office in terms of the liquid containers that they give you. Which I guess makes sense. But also, how pop is so cheap. You know how I know it's cheap? Fucking McDonald's sends... If you go to McDonald's, I'm pretty sure they're still doing the every drink is a dollar. So you can get, like, the... You can get a cup for ants for a dollar. Or, like, they're... One that's the size of a baby's arm for the same price. So they're it's not, they're not losing money. Like they have to even if the soda is a dollar, I bet they're still making seventy five cents on that. Like I guarantee the markup is fucking redonkulous. Like I don't understand how. Like why can't just hey, give me a water cup so I can steal your pop? I think that's all I want. Um. But yeah, Chipotle is one of the last places that does that. But they have to know, right? Like, they have to know that people are taking that stuff. I think, I mean, what's funny is that, like, I'm such a, like, I'll break rules that I think are stupid, but I still want you to think that I'm following the rules. Because um, this kid was coming around and sweeping, and, like, my, uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, there was time... Was this that time or the other time? I don't remember, but there was like a time that I've done that like at Chipotle where I get the soda and in the water cup and like somebody was like coming around and sweeping and I like put my hand over it like I'm in Game of Thrones and don't want to be served because I'm about to kill everybody. Do you know what I mean? Like I do that so that this kid sweeping doesn't see that I got Coke Zero instead of water. Like he gives a single shit. He doesn't care at all. That guy's like, they're paying me below minimum wage somehow. I don't give a fuck. I'm not responsible for this. I don't know. Like, yeah, and why should he? I worked at Chick-fil-A, which was in the food service industry. I don't under, I wouldn't care. It's not my money, dude. Who gives a shit? Who gives a hoot? So yeah, I had to drink just water for that meal for the first time ever at Chipotle. That's not true. Sometimes I get water and I like I'll get water for the meal and then when I go up for a refill, I'll go and I'll get like Coke Zero. Give myself a little sug. Well, it's not even sug. Give myself a little little taste of fake sug. Just a little They say that Diet Coke is more addictive than regular Coke. Why is that? I don't understand. Th those are things that you just hear and you're like that I'm going to roll with that. That's that's locked in as a, as a firm opinion. But I don't know. A lot of times it's not even, you didn't even read it. Like that'd be one thing to just read something and be like, yep, that's it. That's fine. But a lot of times it's like some, somebody that read it and then they told you which, so you're already losing like at least 50% of the information, if not more, because it's secondhand. And then somebody just... God damn it. I've had to yawn for like five minutes and I fought it because I'm a warrior, but I can't. I was broken. Yeah. Okay. I don't remember where I was going. The yawn threw it up. Like the guy on the train. Um, no. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, Sam and I um, have been trying to do um, date nights every week. That's kind of a big thing because I'm out all the time doing comedy and we need to be more intentional or I need to be more intentional about like actually like spending time and doing things together, uh, which is a very good thing. It's a very nice thing. Uh, but it was funny this past week with our date night where we and I'm assuming people other people are like this where you make like pretty massive plans. And then as those plans c get closer, you just kind of just start like chipping away at them 
until you have no plans left at all. So, like, we started with a plan to have dinner in Manhattan, and we ended eating Chinese takeout in our bed. That was how it started and how it ended. We'd made plans to go to this Italian place in Greenwich Village. Luckily, we didn't make an, uh, an appointment, a reservation. We did not make a reservation. Um, but then the morning of, the day of, like hours before, uh, yeah, not even the morning of, like the afternoon of, I am getting ready to go into Manhattan and uh, Sam is just like, yeah, I don't know. I'm feeling pretty tired. Feeling kind of tired. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. She's like, maybe we could, maybe we could find like something else to do. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool. Do we want to, let's go to, let's go to the bar. Like the, let's go to the Italian place. that's like right across the street from us. There's like one, like two blocks away from here. That's delicious. You know, she's like, yeah, okay, cool. Let's do that. And so then like a couple, like an hour later, I'm out. And then she's like, oh, man, I don't know. I'm feeling really blah, 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 whatever. So then we decided to go to one that's even closer, literally around the corner. Like we can see the backyard of this restaurant from our apartment window. It could not be closer. And then I'm starting to get like beaten down by the world. You know how life is. And I'm kind of like, Ugh, what if we... What if we just like stayed in? What if we just like didn't go? I just come back. I'll pick something up on the way home and we can just like eat. He, we won't even have to pay delivery. And she's like, yes, that's perfect. And so then I stop on the way home. I get some food and we come back here. And what was going to be a night of like getting out and going and doing stuff is right back in here. And we have the privilege to do that because we don't have any children. None. There's no children, and that's so sweet for this. I would like kids one day, but not for this. Your home doesn't feel like a prison yet. And so we have the ability to just be like, yeah, we'll stay here. This is cool. Right here, right where we're at, totally fine with that. Which I get it, because, you know, like, to go out, like, that's a process. Like, you got to take a shower. Ew. You've got to put makeup on. Who has the time? You've got to pick out an outfit. Ugh. You know, how you look or how you feel. It's a whole process. And so we just kind of circumvented that and just stayed in. And that, we had a great time doing that. Uh, we started, we got caught up on Sherlock. Caught up. It can't fucking, the show finished five years ago. Um, it's one of those shows where we started watch. well, I've seen it already, but we started watching it. And then kind of like slowly lost momentum and only have like th only had like two episodes left and never finished them. So we have we finished the second to last one and now we have one left that Sam has to watch. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. That story kind of petered out, but that's OK. Um, I don't know. Um, let's touch on some more sports stuff. I, there's a couple of things. I've been getting into Formula One, and that's cool. And Max Verstappen won the championship today or yesterday. I don't fucking know, dude. It was most of the time, like, Formula One races are, like, in the middle of, or they're in the morning. Like, you wake up at, like, 7.30, you roll over, and it's on. But this time, it was in Japan. So the race was at 1 o'clock in the morning. And it was one of those where I couldn't tell if it was today or tomorrow there. Do you know what I mean? Because, like, at some point, obviously, there's some place, because what time is it? It's, like, 4.45 in the afternoon. There's some place where it's 4.45 in the morning. I get that. But there's also, like, there's places on the other side of the International Date Line, I believe. And I think they're ahead. I think it's already tomorrow there. Does that make sense that, like, it's today and tomorrow at the same time, but because of where you are on the planet, whatever, yeah, so I couldn't tell if it was this morning or yesterday afternoon, and, but yeah, the, the race was on. I didn't stay up to watch it. I was up at, like, 1 o'clock, but I kind of fell asleep in this chair. I actually hurt my neck. This is not, this is a great chair to sit. This ain't not, this ain't no sleeping chair. This chair sucks booty to sleep in. Um, 
But yeah, Max Verstappen won. But the craziest thing was it was like it was raining so. I watched the highlights. It was raining so hard that like it, they they would hop on like the driver's cam, like where you can see you can see what the driver is seeing, and you. It was insane. Like you could not see anything. People were just like were hitting each other. It it would be terrifying to drive in if you were going forty in like a sedan. They're going. 150 miles an hour in the most capable cars on the face of the earth. They're and they're not going in a straight line. They're going around curves and fucking hairpins and crazy. Sh I'm like you guys are you guys are idiots. It's such a cool sport, but boy, you guys are idiots for doing that. Like you're gonna die. Um, and Max won today, which I which that sucks. I. Like, people will talk shit about Lewis Hamilton, and that's fine. I, I can get it. He can be kind of, I don't know what he can be, but I like him a lot, and I like Mercedes. Sue me. I understand that, and that's fine. Whatever you're thinking right now, if you're listening to this and care about F1, I'm. that's fine if you think whatever. But fucking Max Verstappen is such a whiny baby bitch. He's a whiny baby bitch. He won't ever, he won't stop complaining and he is a petulant child who, yeah, who, sh yes, he just won his second world championship. He sh This should be his first world championship. I think everyone, including Max, knows that. Um, Yeah, I'm very annoyed that he won. It was never, but the thing was, it was, it was inevitable because Ferrari are dog shit. They can't get out of their own way. Say what you want about Mercedes. They had their car troubles this year, but at least they had... At least they had good strategy and were able to race properly. Ferrari, I don't even know what they're doing. It's it's crazy to see how they're just driving themselves into the fucking ground. But yeah, Max won, which is annoying. But what are you going to do? Um, there's a couple more races. I'm going to try. Me and a couple comedy friends are trying to go to the um, the Las Vegas Grand Prix uh, next year because it looks dope. We're not going to go to the race because you, I think you have to... I think to afford tickets to those games, you actually have to have human slaves I think because the tickets are so goddamn expensive. It's insane. Uh, you definitely have to have own human beings to have enough money to own some of these racetracks. Dude, some of these racetracks are in places where I don't think their women are allowed to breathe there. It is at times a conflict of interest. Let's let's be real. Like anywhere that they're like, and this is shake someone, someone. I bet you're very progressive. You know, like most of these places are in the fucking Middle East. And boy, are they cool to look at. But that's because they've killed everyone who disagrees with them. You know, it's pretty fun what you can build when you have no regard for human life. Um... I feel the same way about this World Cup in Qatar. That's how I feel about that. That I'm very excited for the World Cup because obviously the Ma the Manchester United, Jesus, the United States is back in it for the first time um, since 2014 because we suck super hard and we lost in 2018. Um, and I also like it's gonna it's definitely Messi's last World Cup. It could probably be Ronaldo's last World Cup. Of what are England gonna do? There's a lot of really cool storylines like on the on the pitch stuff. But then you're like, who built the pitch? Oh, that's right. Little baby hands that didn't get paid. That's who built. Like it's and the crazy thing is like it's so fucking documented that it's like how did how, FIFA and UEFA and everything having to do with international soccer, it is laughable how corrupt they are. It's insane how corrupt they are. It's bananas. Um, I don't remember where I was going with this. Um, oh, yeah, going to the Grand Prix. Yeah, because the tickets are so fucking expensive. We're not going to be going to the Grand Prix. We're going to be going to... We just want to, like, go to Vegas and be around it, and that would be fun. Maybe meet somebody, see some people. I think that could be really cool. Um... 
and the track itself looks really dope. And hopefully by next season, um, Mercedes and Ferrari will have better cars that are capable of matching the pace that Red Bull has. All right. Um, also in sports, I, can we agree that Draymond Green is a piece of shit? Like for real, how much more evidence do we need that this isn't a good guy? He's a bad person. Like he might be good at basketball. He is good. I guess he's good at what he does, but he sucks, dude. He is an asshole on the court. Multiple times, dirty fouls, kicking people literally in the dick and balls on purpose on multiple occasions. The dude is the Indomitian Sioux of kicking people in the ball bag. Sucks to be interviewed, is very rude to the media, and then is just punching players in the face. Like, dude, what the, what are you doing? He... In the preseason, this is not in the heat. They're, you're not down three games to two in the NBA Finals and things get a little testy the week of. That I could kind of understand. Dude, you haven't played a game yet this season. What are you doing? Like, the footage came out and they, like, kind of bumped into each other a little bit. Like, he initiated it and then, like, Jordan Poole, like, kind of pushed back on him and then he just fucking hits him in the face. He's a bad person. Like legitimately he's not a good guy and he, he just retire and do your fucking podcast already dude just get out of here i'm over it it's annoying you are an immature bastard like dude but not that the whole team is immature but the whole team is annoying i've never been a warriors fan i find it i find them very like did you guys know that Steph Curry has never committed a foul in his entire life that's true I asked him you can you can look at his facial expression whenever he does anything wrong he is shocked because that he didn't do it he just didn't you know and then he does like the fucking sh I don't know man there's just something about him that irks me the whole team Clay soft, like they're all incredible shooters and they're all very, very good at this version of basketball, which I am ultimately not a fan of, but they are very good at it and they have delivered. They fucking, they've won four championships. Like they are an incredibly good team and incredibly good players. I think they're soft babies. Like, I don't know, dude. That's the other thing. Draymond, you've won four rings. You've won four championships, and you won't shut the fuck up ever. And then you're just, yeah, well, you're punching people in the face. Like, you're sucker punching people in the face. He wasn't threatening you. He didn't have his fists up. He wasn't trying to go for you. You literally, you just, you're a bad dude. You're a piece of garbage. I find it deplorable. I don't know, man. I, I'm coming off pretty, not pretentious, but like, I holier, maybe pretentious is the right word, like holier than thou. I don't know, dude. I just don't like, I don't like fake tough guys. That's, I really don't like fake tough guys. Like, if you're going to be the type of guy who's going to go around and punch people in the face and kick people in the balls, you better be able to take a, a fuck ton of criticism, and B, you better be able to take that shit back, and he can do neither of them. You know? Anytime anybody criticizes him, it, and he can't take the... Like, the whole team... That's why the whole team is soft. Like, the whole... Like, that's their whole team. It bothers me, dude. Like, if you want to be a badass, be a badass top to bottom. Don't be a fucking, don't be a dork who is, like, playing up calls and doing a bunch of bullshit. Like, if you're going to be, if you're going to be the guy who's going to go out there and you're going to play dirty, that's cool. Just know that somebody's coming for your beanbag. You know? I don't know why people just, more people just don't do that. Just, like, go out and just kick Draymond Green in the beanbag. I would love to see that. There should be a highlight reel of 
NBA players just lining up one after the other and just kicking him in the beanbag. That should be happening. But it's not, and that's okay. Because not everything is about me. What else? Did I have anything about that? I don't know. I think we just live in interesting... Right now is very interesting times. Like, it was very... In a very interesting... <clears throat> it's a very interesting time to be in, for sure. Like, we are almost on the brink of nuclear war. And um, I don't think that's being reported on as much. Or maybe I'm just not tuned in. Maybe I just turn on fucking Formula One at 1 o'clock in the morning and wake up early to watch soccer and drink coffee and look at my guitar pedal board. Maybe I do that, and that's prob there's probably more than a grain of truth. There's probably grains, plural, of truth in that. However, like, we are on the fucking brink of nuclear war, and that's... And that's just something that just is there. Like, that's not like a keynote thing. That's just, that's just, that just happens. And my TikTok feed is fucking crazy right now. Like, every other thing is, every other thing is Russian nukes are being moved into position and then just fucking dancing. You know? Like, every other video is just like, and the Russians have launched one of their the one of the world's largest nuclear submarines. Where's it at? And then the next video is just like, let's draft breakfast cereals. Major U.S. cities should be on high alert. Oh man, you took Frosted Flakes. You suck. Like that's the what I'm scrolling through, and it's just it's just weird. I I think it's weird that those two things are juxtapositioned together i don't know it's it is cool though that because i live in new york city i get to prepare for a nuclear warhead now that's cool that's really fun because if i was just in ohio still i would just have to go to work and live my normal life but no dude i I have to prepare for... No, I don't have to prepare. I get to prepare for nuclear war. How cool is that? Dude, that's the benefit of living in a big city that matters, is you have to make a plan of, okay, where is the nearest bomb shelter? Do I have an escape plan for when the roads don't work? How much food... Can I carry on my person? These are fucking cool questions that I get to... And, like, to be honest, how often are you caught up in a moment of history? That's... How often do you get... Does a normal guy or gal get to be caught up in the wheels of history? Almost never. How... What an opportunity. I... I am blown away that I'm able to take advantage of this. Like, that's ultimately, like, at the end of the day, that's freaking cool, dude. That's really cool. Like, yeah, dude. They say if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. Yeah, if you can survive a nuclear holocaust, you really can make it anywhere. Not that anywhere would exist anymore because it'll all be gone, but you can make it other places. I think that might, like, surviving a nuclear explosion has to be one of the top five things that you could survive in your life, I think. You know, I mean, like, what else, what else is there? Um, when they don't have the meat you like at the deli. Fuck, man, that sucks. You know, when a, when a kid... Um, when a child beats you at FIFA online, oof, you know, like real issues that I think are only put into perspective with the advent of the nuclear warhead. I think, yeah, I think that's a top five thing. That's a top five thing that you have to persevere through and come out stronger and better on the other, on the other side. I truly believe that that's just me that I think surviving um, a nuclear explosion is... 
I think I might be the only person who thinks that surviving a nuclear explosion is what people need for growth. I think that, like, man, I think that would really change people's perspectives. Um, what is funny is that even after a nuclear explosion, there would be people that are like, can you get that mask up? Those those would be really fun. People that are, like, still concerned, post, post-apocalyptic, people still care about fucking, like masks like COVID is still their top priority that would be that'd be great my entire family is decimated I haven't seen anyone I know or my relatives in weeks but I got my mask on I don't know yeah dude fucking a nuclear I hope that that I hope it's quick that's what I'll say I hope it's quick and supposedly it is because I, I mean, the only, the only knowledge I have of what like exactly nuclear weapons do is from like World War II and there are a bunch of people that were just, they got got, dude, they are gone. They were here a second, gone the next. There are fucking people that are like ghost people where they like evaporated, but like somehow like part of it got trapped on a wall. Somebody needs to explain to me how that works. I don't get it. Um, but yeah, I just hope it, I hope it's quick. Yeah, I, it's, it's pretty close to happening. I think, I think it's pretty close to happening. Not to be like a war fear mongerer, which is always, that's always a fun thing to be called. I feel like that's a very political word, a war mongerer. I think that's what people in like Congress want to say. That's like a way that like Congress people put each other down. Cause you know how like normal people would be like, fuck you, you piece of shit. You have a small dick and your breath smells like farts. Like that's how we talk to each other. But like people on the floor of Congress have to be like, the Senator from Idaho is warmongering. And I frankly find it disrespectful to the house and to the Senate and to the ever the American democracy. This, this warmongering cannot continue. Like they have to talk like that, like some bullshit, like they read a book in their life and weren't and are you know, whatever yeah i don't mean to do that but it, it, it is scary sometimes i don't love that it's a possibility i don't love that i would prefer if it if it weren't that way but it's also something that i what am I going to do about it? You can't really, you, I'm not going to like not go do things because of that. But it is odd that I could just go get a coffee and then it everything is gone. That is crazy that that could happen. I don't think it will, but it might. And if it did... I'm again blessed because I am uh I I have the privilege and the blessing of being in New York City to experience it. I mean, because at the end of the day, I don't think people are really looking at the positives of nuclear war. I think the I think we that's the biggest thing about nuclear war that people forget about. People don't talk about the positives of a nuclear war. You never have to go back into the office. What a win, dude. Your commute gone forever. You can work remotely for the rest of time. That, dude, what a massive W. I know that people are like, like people don't want to go back to work now. And like, but like people are working from home and remotely more than ever. But dude, like think about just the endless opportunities to work remotely. I think, like, the ability, the freedom that you would have to work wherever and however your, your silly goose soul desires, I think that is, what a gift that nuclear war would give you for that. I, see, these are, the, these are the things that people don't actually consider and don't actually think about that are really, again, at the end of the day, the reason that I'm doing this podcast is to bring these types of ideas to the forefront and so that people, 
in the face of nuclear war can really understand that there are positives. There really are a bunch of positives for going nuclear. I think, I mean, so we, yeah, you'll never, like, you'll, you'll never have to go back into the office ever again. You'll most likely never have to see your grandparents again. What a win, dude. They're on their way out. You, you're kind of bogged down by going to see them. Dude, done. Hey, are you going to make it to Christmas this year? Uh, no, I can't. Um, a nuclear warhead went off in the Hudson River, and so I... <sighs> not going to be able to make it you know that's a that's a win that's a positive dude people don't get it people don't get it people really just don't get that i'm just here to bring positivity in the face of overwhelming negativity and um again nuclear war so I think that, that that about does it for me today, guys. Remember to um, rate, review, subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, at Matt Bowman Comedy, Twitter, at Bat Bowman, B-A-T-T-M-O-W-M-A-N, YouTube, Matt Bowman Comedy, or just Matt Bowman, I can't remember, but on there. Um, yeah, uh, send this to your friends. Tell your friends. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to uh, to grow this. Thanks, guys. Uh, stay bothered and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.